candidates for the Invercargill electorate in the vegan food we all share. Welcome to the Invercargill Vegan Society Potluck for August 2014. We're very grateful to have you all here today, and we're joined by four election candidates representing National, Greens, Democrats for Social Credit, and Labour. We're about to hear from each one of them, and hopefully, well, actually, one of them is going to be the King or Queen of Invercargill, second only to Tim Shadow himself. <laughs> A vegan is someone who doesn't want to harm, use, or kill other animals. Take this little guy, for example. Look at him, on this colourful duvet bed with these day-old baby chicks. He grew up to be an adult and decided to be vegan because he thought he loved his little chicken pregnancy. And he looks after, uh, how many do we look after? Oh, we're allowed 12, so we look after 12 hens. <laughs> <laughs> we humans are animals. We're bipeds, mammals, sentient beings. Vegans are animal lovers, and we'd like this election for people to think about the animals and to vote with their head, with their heart, with their everything, and to look out for the animals for everyone's benefit. And so the Invercargill Vegan Society has got together this evening to form a powerful lobby that tries to corrupt and influence politicians with wonderful food and happy smiles <laughs> and rambling speeches. <laughs> At the end of the day, these four candidates are actual human beings. A person who can be wined and dined and bribed with vegan food. <laughs> Beneath their thick rodney hides beats a human cloud. And we'd like to see it's full of love for animals. Attending tonight are members of the Invercargill Vegan Society Medical Wing, such as Dr. Thomas Joseph, there's Dan Lou, and Nurse Steph Grange. And we'd like to see with our cardiologist Dr. Nicole Edwards using our Steph Escope. If their hearts really are full of love for animals and some blood. And if so, we'll give them our ticks, the vegan vote. So please support our candidates as they each tell us a little bit about themselves and their love of animals. First up, representing National, Sarah Dow. Be welcome to a forum that where you don't actually have to get too political, where you can actually talk about your love of animals. So that's fantastic. Uh, I'm um, an animal lover because I, I mean I've had throughout my lifetime I think it's been five cats, five dogs, a guinea pig that lasted five years um, in the vet was quite impressed uh, with that record, and um, a number of different goldfish. So you know that's that's what I've been committed to have and. I've really enjoyed their companionship, but um, given I'm only you know, permitted to speak for a short time, I thought I'd tell you about one of my cats. And um, she was an interesting cat, if you want to sort of put human um, emotion to an animal. Um, she was a very interesting sort of cat. Um, I'll tell you the story about how we um, obtained her and then a bit about her. Uh, when I was, oh gosh, about 11, we were on our way to Wanaka for our holidays, and as young children do, they need a toilet stop in the middle of nowhere. So we stopped just out of um, Wedderburn, and as I got out of the car, I could hear this sort of meow, meow. And I said to my mother, What's that? And she said, It's nothing. <laughs> and I thought, No, that's not nothing, that's a cat. And sure enough, I sort of said, Here, puss, puss, and out of the bushes came a little tabby, pussy cat, and you could see her rubs and everything. So obviously she had been dumped. So anyway, being the animal lover, I picked her up and she was in the car and off she went on holiday with us uh, to Wanaka. Mm -hmm. So we promptly obviously fed her and she became um, my first cat. But because we put her in, in the car, she loved cars from day one. And she was kind of very funny because when I'd come home from ballet, um, she would jump up onto the car and hang onto the aerial and ride in the garage on top of the car. <laughs> she would, um, you know, swan herself out on the bonnet of the car, ride around. In fact, one time we got right down to the bottom of the street and had to probably tell her to, you know, get off. But she just loved cars that much. Um, and the other odd thing that she sort of did, did was um, she used to steal wool from her from my neighbour's place and string it all around the garden just to let us know that she was, she was there. Um, but you know, she was a fantastic cat, really loving, um, loved a good stroke, loved to sit on your knee, and was a wonderful companion. But ultimately it was a car that killed her, um, she got run over, and I was very, very sad. But that's my story of um, my first cat, and she was very special to me, so 
think about in the eight months that have passed, she's, she's grown to be quite a large, rather weather beetle looking cat. Um, fatty cat and eagle do not like each other, so one is an inside cat and one is an outside cat. In addition to that, I've always kept hens. Um, all my adult life, I've kept hens. I've saved them from, I've saved them from the farms, factories, and the, um, and had to witness the, the terrible spectacle of hens which don't don't know how to roost and don't know how to scratch and peck and um, and that's just dreadful. So now I've got four bantams. They free range around my fifth Vinoka in Grassmere. Um, I have two ducks, two nice white Pekin ducks, and they're just hilarious. Um, and again, these animals were rejected by breeders, um, rejected on the grounds of having pale comb, white legs instead of yellow legs, and a spotty beak, and various other things. So I'm, one of the things that's really important to me as a person is that, is that life is respected, and, and I can't bear cruelty to animals or to people. Having said that, I have a very strong aversion to any animal taller than I am. This is rather unfortunate because without my heels on, I'm five foot tall. So there are dogs and cows and horses and llamas and many animals. Um, I, I'm happy to respect them, but I do so from a very safe distance. <laughs> I sat down and thought, well, quite, you know, there have been lots of animals living with me um, and quite a few wetters. And, and so perhaps I should list all the animals. Um, but the list was really long. And it included the usual range plus some a few oddities from skinks to which would be illegal now and I certainly wouldn't do it. Um, <laughs> skinks to earwigs to guinea pigs. Some had long, happy lives, um, some had rather short lives, but um, they all died of natural causes and or old age, and that's something I'm really pleased about. I don't buy animal, I don't buy products that have been tested on animals, I don't buy, buy um, any item that is that some poor animal has had to die for. Um, I'm largely vegetarian in my diet, but not exclusively so. My butcher knows that when I come to see him needing meat, um, if I've got visitors, he knows that he needs to tell me where the animal has come from, um, how old it is, and what sort of treatment it has had during its lifetime. So I am a bit, you know, I'm largely vegetarian because I grow an extensive range of fruit and vegetables and, and nuts and things. And I like to eat what I grow, so my independent spirit drives me to do my own thing in my own way, and and it pleases me greatly that um, what was considered eccentric when I started doing it 30 years ago is now considered mainstream. And my next project is bees. Thank you. <laughs> and last but not least is Labour's Lucy Sinclair. Thanks, Jordan, and thanks very much for the invitation tonight. Now, I'm glad we're a reasonably small group because I was wondering about presenting this picture that I can hand around. These are the some of the rescued element, elephants of Sri Lanka, former working elephants in an elephant sanctuary. And yes, I was there as a parliamentarian at a UN AIDS conference. And I thought, because everybody else would talk about domestic New Zealand animals, that it might be good to put a wee bit of a world perspective on the rescued animals and the respect for animals and the fact that even in some countries, we're still in the third world countries, there is actually a growing awareness that animals should be rescued and not just to be worked their entire lives and that they can actually be beautiful animals that the country is proud of as part of that country's heritage, as part of what they show to customers and other visitors. Um, just so you know, David and I did buy some umbrellas, which is one of the products um, that they make to help fund this um, elephant sanctuary. They also make elephant dung and paper. We're not sure of the process, but that is another thing that helps fund, yeah, that's another thing that helps fund this sanctuary. Um, what I thought I'd say about about my New Zealand um, attitude to animals is that I grew up in a Macaago with animals from as young as I can remember. Um, mainly cats, pet lambs and pet ducks. The pet lambs and ducks, the ducks were rescued during the duck shooting season. 
The pet lambs were always orphan lambs from the farms of my uncles and cousins up in the North Zeppelin. And the cats, we had an entire succession of cats because my eldest brother worked at um, a grain store in, in the harbour. And there was a colony, basically, of cats. He, Owen would religiously bring home cats for us to look after. I'm sad to say that the first 12 cats died very quickly, obviously because of diseases and lack of care. The 13th cat lived for the next 15 years. However, because the four of us, the four girls, my brothers were much older and were away from home by then, um, had the succession of 12 cats that died, it became a family tradition not to name animals. So the cat that lived for 15 years was always known as Mr. Puss and nothing else. So in our family, animals don't get given names. Um, so life moved on. I didn't have, have any animal at all for the ten and a half years I looked after my elderly father in Invercargill because of the danger of my father actually tripping over an animal. So that was a quite conscious choice and I didn't have animals for many years while I was a single career person because I actually believe if you're taking on the responsibility of animals then you should actually care for them properly, not lock them up in a house all day, etc. David and I currently um, have a very large property which we are renovating, a 1914 house. Part of the kitchen renovation was that we wanted to let a lot more light into the kitchen and we thought there is an area that would let in a lot of natural light Instead of putting in a window, why don't we design and build a fish tank? We were told this was impossible, but we did it. So we had fish. About three months ago, we rescued, now this is before the Mosgiel rescue, we actually rescued chickens from the Invercargill Battery Farm. Um, chickens is something that I grew up with. My mother always kept chickens. We grew up feeding the chickens. Our cats were always very friendly with the chickens. Um, we have a long history with chickens, so we were very pleased to rescue some chickens from the battery farm. And that's the last story I want to leave you with. The chickens that we rescued, three of them, when we got them were very sad chickens indeed. Their little combs were all droopy. I'm sure you have seen chickens like that. Their little combs were all droopy. Their feathers were very dull. They were chickens who had never had the chance, of course, to be outside to battery farm atmosphere and therefore they didn't know how to roost and they didn't know how to fend for themselves. And we were told it would take several weeks for those chickens to start to become chickens. In fact, within a week of them being on our property, and we do say they're semi-free range, so we have quite, we have too many cats at the moment to feel that we can let them entirely free range. If you're seeing their property, you'll know why. Uh, but within a week, they had basically picked up to the extent that they had bright pink stand-up combs. Their feathers had become glossy. They were actually roosting and scratching and being chickens in a way that has been extremely impressive. And they absolutely love eating spinach. In fact, we are considering planting a lot more spinach in the garden simply because some of our friends are getting a bit worried about their habit of, uh, of um, going to our beer gardens <laughs> and taking the outer spinach leaves. <laughs> so we have a large garden which we are also growing fruit trees etc in and we are looking at another few rows of spinach to keep our chickens in food because I would have to say, although we have given them a large selection of greens, they wolf down the spinach. And in fact, they have developed such characters that we know they are disappointed that day uh, they don't get a <laughs> So, to us, uh, I remember from, from childhood that you get very affectionate towards certain chickens. And it's just a real reminder that in fact, chickens develop individual characters. The three of them actually have, I hate to call it a pecking order, but there is one of them who is the lead chicken. And there is one of them who's the smallest one who um, may not always be the lead chicken, but I would say manages to always get her own way. 
So, so they do absolutely develop characters. They're, they're the most entertaining um, animals to have. And my friend Liz Miller, who was going to come to my book at Avalon's and apologises because she actually had another meeting on, um, who's been my lifelong friend and whom I've gone through a series of chihuahuas and papillons with. Her papillons love their chickens and love going up and saying hello to them when they come to visit the premises. So David and I have, have a succession of continuing relationships with animals and I'm sure you all know because it was a public announcement that the Labour Party has said we will stop the import of any cosmetics that have been tested overseas on animals and of course uh, Trevor Mallard of the Labour Party very much had the 40,000 signature petition to stop the testing, animal testing for synthetic hides which I assure you all the party was absolutely right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Looking forward